Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Clarifying Coupled Inductor and Transformer Modeling. This is the outline of this presentation. We will see first an introduction. Then we will verify the coupled inductor modeling in LTS files. We will show the equivalence between the coupled inductor model and the transformer model. We will then explain how to go from the transformer model to the coupled inductor model and from the coupled inductor model to the transformer model. And finally, we will verify these models by doing an LTS PICE simulation. So the main objective in this presentation is to clarify once and for all the relationship between the coupled inductor model that we are showing here and the transformer model shown here on the right. So we can see that for the coupled inductor model we have the self-inductances of each inductor and then we have the coupling factor K. So we have three parameters to model our coupled inductor. For the transformer model we have in total four parameters. We have the leakage of the primary side, we have the magnetizing inductance, we have the tens ratio and then we have the leakage inductance of the secondary. So this is kind of a mess because we have four parameters here while we have only three parameters here but we know that these two models should be equivalent. So let's investigate what is going on here. If we dig into the literature related to the modeling of transformers in LTS spice, we can find these two sources of information. One is this paper using transformer in LTS spice suture cut 3 by Mike Engelhardt, who is the author of LTS spice. And in this paper, it is said that the leakage inductance is equal to the value of the self-inductance times 1 minus the coupling factor squared. And if we go to LTS PICE help and look for the simulation of transformers, then we find this other equation here where it is said that the leakage inductance is equal to the square root of the product of the self-inductances times 1 minus the coupling factor squared. So it's not very clear what is the leakage inductance in the transformer because these formula here are different and also it's not very clear what is the leakage inductance that these formulas refer to because it can be the leakage inductance uh, in the primary, in the secondary, the addition of both of them refer to the primary is not very clear. So we are going to try to elucidate in this problem of modeling coupled inductors and transformers in LTS PICE. Let's first review the modeling of the coupled inductors in general. If we have two inductors with a given coupling factor K and we take the currents and the voltages as shown here, then we know that we have these two differential equations that relate the voltages and the current. So we have the self-inductances L11 and L22 and then we have the mutual inductance M and we know that the mutual inductance is equal to the coupling factor times the square root of the product of both self-inductances. So note that we have in total three independent parameters, the two self-inductances and the mutual inductance. Or we can use the two self-inductances and the coupling factor. We also know that these differential equations can be implemented with this equivalent circuit here in which we have this input inductance which is L11 minus M we have the output inductance here, L22 minus M, and then we have the mutual inductance in parallel, M. We have seen this in previous videos, 
For example, in this video, Power Electronics number 32, Introduction to Wireless Power Transfer, Part 2, IPT Operation and Modeling. You can find more information about the modeling of coupled inductors. One easy way to characterize our coupled inductor is by measuring the inductance seen from one terminal. When we leave the other terminal in open circuit, or when we make a short circuit in the other terminal. So here, for example, if we measure the inductance seen from terminal 1 when we leave in the other terminal, terminal 2 open, then we are going to measure the self-inductance of the first inductor, L11. Now, if we make a source circuit, on the second terminal and we measure the inductance from terminal 1 then we are going to see this equivalent inductance here and if we operate in this expression then we obtain this value seen from terminal 1 when terminal 2 is short circuit which is the self inductance of inductor 1 times 1 minus the coupling coefficient squared and we can do the same from the side of inductor 2 so we leave the inductor 1 open and we measure the inductance from terminal 2 and then we will see the self inductance of inductor 2 and now if we do a short circuit uh, at terminal 1 and measure the inductance, then we will see this value which is equal to the self-inductance of inductor 2 times 1 minus the coupling coefficient squared. So now let's do an example that we can verify in LTSPICE. We are going to select L11, the inductance of one of the inductors, the first inductor, equal to 100 micro Henry. L22, the inductance of the second inductor, equal to 1 milli Henry. And we select for the coupling factor a value of 0 0.8. So if we leave terminal 2 open and we measure the inductance from terminal 1, we have to see 100 micro Henry. And if we do a short circuit in terminal 2 and then we measure the inductance from terminal 1, we have to see this value here, 36 micro Henry. And now from terminal 2 with terminal 1 open, we will see L22 equal to 1 milli Henry. And from terminal 2 with terminal 1 in short circuit, then we will measure 360 micro Henry. Now we are going to verify this by simulation in LTS PICE. So we have here our coupled inductor L11 and L22 with these values that we have selected. The coupling factor is 0 0.8. We are going to operate at 100 kHz. We are supplying the coupled inductor using this voltage source here with 10 volt peak. We are using a series capacitor in order to uh, minimize the average current that can remain at a steady state in the simulation. And with this statement here, we obtain the voltages, RMS voltage, RMS current, the impedance, and then the inductance. So first here we have terminal 2 in open circuit. And if we do the simulation, then we will obtain a value of the inductance seen from terminal 1 equal to 100 micro Henry as expected. Now we do the simulation in short circuit at terminal 2. So we select the value of this resistance here equal to 1 million and then measure again the inductance from terminal 1 and we see 36 micro Henry, which is also the value that we have calculated before. And we do the same from terminal 2, we apply the sinusoidal voltage at terminal 2 with terminal 1 open with this uh, resistance equal to 1 mega ohm, so is almost 
an open circuit and then we measure a value of the inductance equal to 1 milli Henry. And then again from terminal 2, when terminal 1 is short circuit using 1 milli ohm here, then we measure the value of 360 micro Henry. So everything looks nice. So now we are sure that the T model of the coupled inductor is implemented in LTS bytes. Now the initial question remains, which is what is exactly the relationship between the coupled inductor model and the transformer model. In the coupled inductor model we have three parameters, while in the transformer model we have in principle these four parameters. So we are going to look into this in order to find the relationship between both models. If we analyze the behavior of the transformer, we can see that here we have the current through the secondary translated into the primary with the tense ratio. So through the magnetizing inductance, we have this current I1 minus N I2. And therefore, analyzing this circuit, we can obtain very easily this differential equation that we can write also as shown here. Then we can write this other equation and from it we get finally this expression for the voltage across the secondary as a function of the current through the primary and secondary. Now by inspection of these two equations that we have just gotten, then we can see that this parameter here will be equivalent to L11. And this parameter here and here, n times Lm, is equal to the mutual inductance. And finally, this expression here corresponds to the self-inductance of the second inductor, L22. So with this, we have the relationships between the coupled inductor parameters and the transformer parameters. So now we have everything. If we have the parameters of the transformer, then we can obtain the three parameters of the coupled inductor by using these expressions that we have just obtained. We can also obtain the coupling factor using this equation here. And reversely, if we know the three parameters corresponding to the coupled inductor, the self-inductances and the mutual inductance, then we can calculate the parameters of the transformer model using these expressions shown here. So we can see that for the transformer model, we have a total of four parameters, but only three expressions. So in principle, there are infinite solutions to model the coupled inductor using the transformer model. We can fix, in principle, any of the four parameters of the transformer and then calculate the other three using these equations. Here, for example, we have as a degree of freedom the tense ratio of the transformer, so we can calculate the three parameters, the magnetizing inductance, the primary leakage inductance, and the secondary leakage inductance using any number for the tense ratio in principle. And of course, we can use for the tense ratio the actual windings tense ratio, but in principle we could use any value and the model would be equivalent to the coupled inductor model. The only problem of selecting any value for the parameter n, the tense ratio of the ideal transformer, is that for some values of n we can obtain a negative value of the leakage inductances. And this is not good when we want to use this model in a simulation program as LTS spice. So let's analyze the condition of M in order to have positive values for the leakage inductances. So this parameter here has to be positive. 
So L11 has to be higher than M over N. And then we get this condition here. Also L22 has to be greater than N times M. And then we get this other condition here. So combining both conditions, we obtain this final condition. So the parameter N has to be in between these two values. And what happens here is that if the coupled inductor has a very high value of the coupling factor K, the parameter N is going to be very close to the windings turns ratio. Let's see this better with an example. Here we have an example with a transformer in which we have a leakage inductance in the primary equal to 0.5 microhenry. The magnetizing inductance is 100 microhenry. The tens ratio is 1 over 10. And the leakage inductance in the secondary is 10 microhenry. So using the expressions that we have seen before, we can model this transformer using two coupled inductors in which L11 is equal to 100.5 microhenry, L22 is equal to 10.01 millihenry, the mutual inductance M is 1 millihenry, and we can also calculate the coupling factor if we like, and we obtain 0.997. So we can see that this value is very high because what we have here is a good transformer with low leakage inductances. Now we are going to do a simulation in order to check that the behavior of both models, the transformer model and the coupled inductor model, are the same. Here we can see both models implemented in LTSPICE. So here we have the coupled inductor model. These are the parameters that we have just calculated. The operating frequency is 100 kilohertz. We have loaded at the secondary of the coupled inductor a resistance of 100 ohms and we are supplying with a sinusoidal voltage of 10 volt peak. And the same for the model corresponding to the transformer model. So here we have the leakage inductance at the primary, then we have the magnetizing inductance and then we have the leakage inductance of the secondary. And we have implemented here the ideal transformer using a transformer with a primary inductance of 10 millihenry, much greater than the value of the magnetizing inductance. And then with the tens ratio squared times the primary inductance, we have the inductance of the secondary. So this is almost an ideal transformer. So now we can execute the simulation and see the results. We can measure the voltage at the input of the coupled inductor. And we see this waveform, which is very similar to the voltage coming from the sinusoidal voltage source. And then we can measure the voltage at the secondary of the coupled inductor. And then we can see this waveform in blue. Maybe we can add another pane and see the voltage across the primary here and across the secondary here. And then for comparison, we can add here in this pane, we can add the voltage across the primary. So we can see that it superposes exactly to the other one, of course. And then selecting here, we can add the uh, voltage across the secondary of the transformer model here. And we can see that also superpose perfectly to the waveform coming out of the coupled inductor model. Maybe we can see each one with uh, the other. So here we have the waveforms uh, in the coupled inductor and here we have the waveforms on the transformer. So we can multiply this one by 10 to see it better in comparison with the voltage across the secondary. So we can see that there is uh, some 
uh, phase lag between both of them and if we multiply also this one here by 10 we can see that both waveforms are exactly the same. Well, this concludes this presentation today. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions on the comments section of this video. I hope that this presentation has been clarifying for you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.